Hey guys, Greg here, Underground Graphics. Our third kit for today. Um, forgive us if we're gonna be a little slow on this one. We'll try to get through it. Um, <clears throat> we've got our Eddy kit. Uh, this is a kit, um, we had some inspiration on this. Uh, lots of people send us photos. Um, this was a very popular kit earlier this year. We have recreated it. It took us weeks to make the templates for this and uh, we think you're gonna love it. Again, coming off the uh, theme of the Eddie Bauer, uh, if you can get a look at that, we did do this install uh, earlier last week. This is for the two-door model. We have this for the four-door as well, which is what we're gonna show you today on our Shop Bronco. Um, <clears throat> this is gonna be a digitally printed kit, which means that as we're not using uh, your typical 3M wrap films that are you know pre-colored. Uh, we're gonna ink this color onto the film uh, plus side of that is it's going to be one layer, one piece. The bad side is that we can't print metallic inks. Uh, since we do have the template for this, it is cut by machine. Uh, we can cut that on die cut film. We're just not going to have that pinstripe. Uh, again, this kit was originally done um, as a one-off, uh, all done by hand. We have made this into a kit. Uh, I believe it's well, a lot of pieces. I'm not sure what the kit count is on that or the piece count is on that. Um, but we did, we, we have a piece for the hood, <clears throat> your front fender, lower rockers, that sill below the rockers, rear fender, and it's going to wrap around in the back. There's a little piece on the tailgate as well. <clears throat> Again, this is a kit that we do recommend professional installation on. This is probably the hardest kit we've installed. Gion did this last week. He's going to help us with this one today. We're going to kind of work together um, to show you how this one goes on. Just like the other kits that we do here in-house um, for demo purposes, we're using a 40C calendar film, which is not what we're gonna send to you. You're gonna get that 180 MC 3M with a gloss premium laminate or satin if you want it, but we do recommend gloss for this. Again, and this photo is here on that eruption green. We did like that tan uh, with their burnt orange combo. On ours today, we wanted to try something different. Again, just to show you all that this kit is versatile. Uh, we're gonna do one next week that's gonna be white on top of blue. For today, we wanted to bring out that orange or we're gonna do orange accents with the black pinstripe along the driver's side. <clears throat> Again, since we're just doing this for demo, we're not doing the full, the full vehicle. Um, but we did wanna note that again, this is an intensive uh, install. Fenders come off, the flares come off, um, we've got to get up into the, um, open the doors, get up into those jams, lots of tucking. There is going to be some trimming on the vehicle. Um, it is imperative that you get this clean. Once those fenders come off, we're going to show you how to do that as well. Lots of dust, lots of dirt, lots of stuff that gets up in those nooks and crannies. We've got to get all that stuff out of there. Um, again, this is going to be for demo purposes, so we're all going to kind of run through it. Um, but just want you to know um, what that entails. We do recommend you find an installer in your area. Um, but again, our kits, we do make them. If you want to attempt it, feel free to do it. Uh, our two door that we did a couple weeks ago, I believe it was about four to five hours. Um, and again, we're taking the spare tire off, taking the fenders off, lots of prep, lots of cleaning. That didn't include that. That was really our install. <clears throat> so think about that ahead of time when you when you get into this, you know, what, you, what your local installer is gonna charge you by hour and so on and so on. Um, again, this is a huge kit, lots of square footage on it, lots of material. Um, anyway, I know there's a lot to go into. I'm sure we're gonna uh, leave out some stuff or we'll kind of get to that as, as we go into it. Uh, what I think we're gonna do is set up the camera and uh, both of us just kind of working together to, to show you the install on this. I'm gonna let Gian chime in when we get to some of these uh, areas that I know uh, we found on that first install where we need to kind of put some focus on and some tricks and some tips just to help get you through it. Um, again, take your time, tape up, you know, tape up, measure everything before you apply anything. Um, and uh, before we, we get to install, I did want to show you the kit right around here. I've got this laid out on the table. And again, this is one that we're doing here for our shop Bronco. This is going to be the Badlands orange with the black pinstripe. This is just the driver's side. Um, and this is not masked. Yours will come with a pre-mask on top of that. 
so there's no risk to damage that laminate or that vinyl. We do mask the the hood for ours, we did find that's a lot easier to put on as a solid piece as it is to put on that, that U-shape and, and hit that hood bump. Um, but again, we we can do this for our purposes without the mask on there. Um, again, this is a little bit thicker. The vinyl you're gonna get is gonna be a cast and it's gonna be a lot thinner. So we do recommend that that be masked. Um, if your professional guy does it and he wants to pull that mask off, he can, um, but again, we did mask that last time for that install. Um, some of those tools you're gonna need for this, uh, just like everything else, you wanna do a soft squeegee. We, we will provide a soft squeegee to you with that. Lots of masking tape, pair of scissors, sharp blade. You know, we use those, I think it's the Ulfa retractable with the, the breakaway blades. Um, our alcohol water mix, uh, 30 alcohol, 70% water, a heat gun, again, lots, lots of clean towels um, and it is important to use that heat gun you definitely want to go back and post heat this again you're going to have some stress uh, not stress but as you fold up under those fenders uh, you want to make sure that's that's all post heated and um, that adhesion is set uh, all right well when we come back you're going to meet Gian and we're going to start getting taped up and uh, we'll go from there see you in a minute all right guys we're getting ready to install this eddy kit I uh, wanted to introduce you to Gian How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Um, again, two people on this, try and get this thing done. Uh, four to five hours what we did this in last week for a full vehicle. Hopefully this goes pretty quick. Um, forgive us going back and forth, getting some of the materials and stuff like that, but we did want to get started. Show you start to finish how this thing goes. Um, fenders, let's look at these fenders. How do we get these things off of here? Well, it, they seem a little sketchy, but if you look on the inside, let me get to that. Towards the outside of the fender here, we do have a few little clips that rotate. So, if you sneak on in the inside here, so all of these are going to be facing forward. What you want is for them to be facing pretty much straight towards your wheel. Rotate all of them. Make sure you don't forget any. Of course, double check it before you start to pull anything off. See so they're all facing the right direction. We're gonna get a good grip on it, on the fender. Get your fingers underneath it. Get a good hold on to it. Make sure you're not gonna toss your fender on the floor. And just give it a pull. Seems easy, seems scary but it does come off that easy. Yeah, don't let that freak you out. We've done this several times. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this camera back on and we're gonna start cleaning, uh, get the other fender off. That rear tire, again, that's gotta come off as well. As we talked about before, cleanliness, cleanliness getting everything clean, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of uh, that alcohol solution. And this is that area we talked about. Um, again, we've done this before in here, but we wanna make sure we are clean in here. All that dirt and mud, and uh, we'll get up in those fenders. It gets all up, all up behind there. So that's that area you want to make sure is, is clean. If we didn't mention again, this is a dry install kit. Uh, we talked about that wrap vinyl. We're using that 3M 180MC. Uh, it's commercial grade, uh, high performance cast wrap film. So it is air release. And we do have a piece that's gonna come up down here, up under this door, down here below, just under where you get that kind of orange peel on that paint. If you've got the, I've got the slider, so this is the hardest one to get around. You're gonna come up right to where the, uh, the roll starts for the body. You want to make sure all that is clean. Let's 
Let's get this spare off. I know these back corners here, when we get to this, this is gonna be one of those areas that we're gonna go back and show some detail in. Obviously that kit's gonna come back here. You have to trim by hand here, but you'll have that piece of vinyl that wraps all the way around to that tailgate. So we're gonna to wanna to put a piece of masking tape to follow that body line as we kind of stretch that around. Might need a hand on it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask for a hand. <laughs> right. And again, just that back about three inches from the gate up is where we're just going to clean. Watch your head on the camera. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, we're gonna start get some masking tape set up so you kind of start getting this kit in place. We've just turned our air conditioner off in here uh, just so you can hear us. Uh, you know, we got that mic kind of far away from where we're working so you can kind of get a good view of everything we're doing. Uh, but don't do this outside. Um, I know it's hot, it's summertime. Um, but you do want to do this in a temperature controlled environment, probably low 70s if you can. Seems to be ideal. Again, you can never have enough of this masking tape when you need it. It's right there. Not worried about it looking good for the camera. We just want to show you how to do this right. I'm going to leave this here if we need more. We'll do those sides first. I know, I think, you know, we did fender, fender, and then the center, correct? Yes. Front fender, rear fender, or a rear fender, front fender, and then the center. Helps it line up. And these are going to line up right on that body line. So the top of that pinstripe will be right at the bottom of that crease. We're just gonna kind of lightly tape this just to get it in place. We'll notice too, um, and I, I see this on every kit that we do, uh, Ford body panels aren't always straight. <laughs> so our rear door sits about God, almost an eighth of an inch, 16th to eighth of an inch lower than the front door. So we really just kind of split that difference. You're gonna see it when you start looking at the details of it, when you stand back and look at it, it's really not a big deal. Um, just do the best you can, get that to where you want. You're gonna have a little bit of play in it. Um, so again, not a, not a huge deal on that. As you can see here, I've got that top of that stripe just under, or just right on that body line. As this finishes, it almost touches, it is touching this lower rocker piece and I want that to be even. I'm gonna again we're gonna tape everything in place first, make sure things where we want it. This there's no there's no bend in this, it's laying flat along that body. This is following that that line of that of that fender. Once we get this tacked we can we can cut extra off if you want. Again you've got the door here this one we'll have to cut and trim. Um, as we get to the rear fender and the front fender it'll just roll into that. <clears throat> you do want that to roll in a little bit because even with that fender attached, you, you may still see some paint. Again, depending on the color of the kit you do, you want to make sure that's, that's tucked. Um, again, this is that calendar film we're using for demo purposes. So, you know, we may not get as much tuck or, or it may not go down as easy, but your kit will be uh, much easier than what we're doing here. As Greg did say, this is flat. So, if you run your hand across, the decal or the, uh, the vinyl, it should be flat all the way through. It might be a little bit of a ripple in it, but if you have anything that's aggressive, um, then you need to pull it back up and 
make sure that it's, it's flush against the rest of the car. So that way you know that you're going to follow your body line. This is that section back here in the back. Um, again, you've got a lot of extra here that's going to roll around to the back on that tailgate. That's where you want to make that, that masking line or use some masking tape to make your line. As, as this tacks, and again, you're going to have to do a spice here with, with your blade to relieve uh, that vinyl. <clears throat> We're going to use that masking tape as our line to, so this can wrap around. Again, this is wrap vinyl, so don't worry about that extra slack on it. Once we get that tack with a little bit of heat, we can warm that stuff down, uh, warm that vinyl, it'll go down without any, any, any issue. So I'm going to go ahead and just temporarily mark that line now. And then you'll see that again, that crease on the body where that's going to hit. So I just want to make that mark there just to show you where that's at for now. Okay, that's going to run, run all the way to the back. You've got plenty of room for, for this to tuck. Again, we're going to use these as, 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 as marks, um, as, as just as we've, we've showed you on, on other kits. Uh, leave these here. We're not going to peel that off. We're actually going to cut on, the, on the, the backing paper, not the vinyl, just to score that tape. So that's our mark. So we know this is, this is set up all the way, all the way down. Again, confirm, 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 this is how you want it. Because again, even though this is air leased, you can pull this up, lay it down again, but it'll start to get kind of wonky and kind of wavy if you keep laying it down, pulling it up, laying it down, pulling it up. So once we get this all taped in place, we want to make sure that's it. And then we're going to mark those spots and then start applying. I know we talked about doing fender, fender first. This is all one piece on that back door. So we're not going to apply this one yet. We're going to go ahead and do those fenders, but you can see we're going to have some overlap on that. So when that gets ready to go, those are going to line up. We got plenty of room on the bottom there to tuck. All good to go. Let's just lay this one down here for now. And then of course you've got that long piece that comes down. I believe for our kit, because um, we're doing this as a demo, I may have even split that just so we can get that on there, um, not burn through all that material. I'll come back and double check that one once we get to that point. Um, but I did want to keep taping up. We still got to do this top scene. We'll do that and then we can start to start applying. Now these are those pieces that you're going to use for that bottom up again. This one is spliced um, for us. That kit that you're gonna get will be one long piece that's gonna hit that bottom rocker. Gina, you got any tips for getting that stripe into this, into that bevel? I think I do. Uh, so, you have to really get eye level with it. Uh, luckily, <clears throat> with this one, we have a split here where it, it's two different colors, so you can help the, the that divot in the body line to help you line it up a little bit. But if, say, you get one that's a solid color, then you can kind of just look down the body line and make sure that you have the same battle, amount of light. You'll see a gleam of light on there that helps accent the body line. You'll see it a little bit better that way. And you just want to make sure you pull right in there. And of course, tape it up. Always good to have a lot of tape. Is that about where you need it to be? Start from one end to the other. This is that body line again, or that panel where we're gonna have this door is just a little bit higher than the front door. So I'm gonna go ahead and
just line this up to the front door versus worry about where this is gonna hit on this back door. I've got it taped up in the back right where I want it. That's following this one, that's following all the way down. Again, once this is all taped up, like Gian said, we're gonna look down it and just eyeball it and make sure that looks straight, there's no wave in it. So right now we're just, again, getting that in place. You pull that a little with a little bit, you know, not a whole lot of force, but just keep it um, taut, then you shouldn't have any dip in that. And I'm going to line this one up again with that back door, just lightly apply that tape, keep that in place. And again, that looks straight. I'm going to go ahead and put that hinge right there. And there's very little, you know, flex in that. So I think that's right where it should be. But just to make sure that's this is that point we want to get down there. Get to the front or the rear. It really look down there. What do you think? I like it. I think it looks fine too. Yeah, nice. It is extremely it's important to, to make sure that is straight. It is easy to get a little bit of a dip in there, especially when you're not expecting it. Um, so that is definitely the, the main reason why you want to look either from front or the back with your eye going straight down. And I know everyone's got a different technique to applying vinyl. Um, when we hit, like on the retro hockey kit, when we go over that seam, I like to tape this and then just use my, my thumb and run down the middle and push that, you know, go all the way out. We just want to make sure that's not, that's not you're not pushing any wave into that. Um, Gian, how do you want to attack this one? Um, your hinge method. <laughs> That's All the right. best way to okay. go. Okay, so same thing. We'll hinge it. We'll, we'll we'll mark our spot there. We're gonna kind of you know we'll have a spot to go with. But basically, yeah, we're gonna use our thumb, push on that middle line, and that should guide us all the way down. Um, worst case is you see something come up again. This vinyl is super forgiving. We can pull that up. We can relay it. We can pull it up. We can relay it. Not that you want to do that ten times, but you do have second opportunities with this. So you want to start front, you want to do these two and I'll do these two back here. Works for me. All right, let's go. So again, we all have our methods. I like to use these, the masking tape as a lineup. <clears throat> Be super careful. Um, again, there's not a whole lot of room on this, but I just want to score that masking tape to give me the shape of that vinyl. So I'm not cutting through the tape, I'm not cutting on the vinyl, but just enough to give me enough to kind of tear that out. You can see what I've done there. That's going to be my lineup there. And it is already getting hot here. Yeah. Oh, 72 degrees. And again, kind of, I'm not going to lay this, or actually you can tack it, and it'll come back. And I hit that right on him. I got to Got a little bit of a wrinkle in there. Lay that back down. And again, this vinyl, you can really use just your finger, your thumb to kind of get that in there. If you want to go back with this, and I would, I would go back with that squeegee just to make sure it's all done well.
one thing I did catch myself that I did that I would not recommend. I started from, well, on this fender, I started from the back and went forward. For this, you definitely want to start from the front uh, because the body line does stop at a certain point and that's where the, the graphic is going to stop as well. So, uh, start from the front, go to the back. Uh, lucky for me, I managed to land exactly where we needed to. So, uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Also, that is why we tape everything up before actually applying. If I were to apply that and not have known where that was going to fall, who knows how it looked, of course we can pull that back up. I'm really curious how this orange is going to turn out on this cactus. Pretty good. This is one of those colors I love so much. And as we found out on some of those other kits we just did, with that sunburn kit, with that retro fade, a lot of color on this didn't look like we thought it was going to look. But again, on a darker color one, that would look fantastic. <clears throat> this kit is going to look best, I think, is what you're used to seeing that with um, <clears throat> that cream and that burnt orange on that eruption green um, as well. Uh, you imagine a blue, the velocity blue, the antimatter blue with a white kit uh, with an accent stripe on top of that. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing that. And again, I mean, if you've got red, if you can do silver, we can do whatever you want with this and it's gonna, it's gonna look fantastic. You've got a lot of extra on here. That's up to you and how you want to tuck that. I think you really only need about a quarter inch. So again, that blade cut on the inside, you know, the outside. If I'm if I'm doing this stripe, I want to cut on the on on this edge of this of this door. Not cutting on that paint. I'm going to tilt that blade just a little bit, drag the top of that blade, so I'm not cutting on that paint, just to get that fresh cut. I can go back and I can tuck that once I get this one down. And now that I've got this as a marker, I really don't even need this tape. If you're curious, if just this top stripe is available, it is, it will be. I don't have it on the site yet. Um, we did one recently for a local that we did this piece in white on his cactus gray. It looked awesome. So uh, yeah, that's something we we're gonna offer by itself. taped up. We'll have to go back and tuck these after we do the fenders, but again, we want to go ahead and just get this in place. Again, I'm going to use this stripe to line up with. running your finger through the body line, give just a light amount of pressure for it, just for it to tack on there. If you push too hard, you risk potentially shifting the, the, not the body line, of course, but the graphic that goes inside of it. And then you may have to peel it up for a little bit or might create some sort of a blemish. So if you're gentle, take your time, of course, then you'll get the best results. Uh, 
uh, keeping your work environment clean uh, will help. This vacuum paper is super slippery. Last thing I want to do is slip, especially on camera. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get started on these fenders. Okay. Let's go. I'm going to do it. Not sure if some of you saw, but where Greg's line ended, it did come over onto this side of the door. Um, that's the overhang that's there just so you can tuck in and get it to go around the corner. Uh, I did go ahead and pull up just to where his side of his door was touching the front door here and just barely pushed the squeegee into the body line right between the seam right there, just so I can get this one to go right on across. I don't have to worry too much about potentially messing up that side. And then you can go back later, open your door, and get that to end where you want it to. So, <clears throat> on this rear fender, you saw what I did. Again, I made the tears on that tape, so I have my lineups. Still did a hinge method. Just lightly apply that piece there. Again, we're gonna roll, we're gonna let that roll, but I wanna get this top edge all the way down um, to here. I am gonna go ahead and splice that so we can come back and do this, um, this back piece once we get to the back. Again, if you can see what I've done there, those are our marks. We're going to hit all those three pieces. Um, something we didn't talk about, make sure your hands are clean. Um, wash your hands before you do this. Uh, any dirt will get picked up in that vinyl, and you don't want, uh, you don't, that's hard to get out. You can but it, again, it's not the easiest thing to do. And again, I'm just gonna kind of lightly tack this until I get back to that section. Connection joint, whatever you want to call that. <clears throat> and now we can start working our way in. So this is the area here that you are going to want that heat gun is you want to roll this up into the in, into the fender. Um, see what I can do without it so far, but the heat will make that a lot easier to do. That actually worked out pretty well. So 
this excess that's just on top of that, not a big deal, you're not gonna see it as long as it doesn't interfere with um, the guide pins on getting your fenders back on. I've got one here that it's going a little bit over. Everything else looks good. sharp blade right down that center of that piece there. I'm right handed, so forgive me. we're ready we can come back we can tackle this that's fine there as it is right now now I've got this one on here remember to careful not to open the doors if you know you've got vinyl overlapping Make sure you've got all your tools and everything you need out of there before you do something like that. I know this one's done, this one's not done. That way I need to open this door to tuck this edge and I still gotta tuck this edge here. Can't open that one, I still gotta tuck this edge. So I'm just gonna lift this up just enough to open that door. That's sitting there, that's sitting there. It looks like a gun, you need a gun. We can kind of roll in again. That's that time you do want that heat gun to get in on these on these edges. Uh, trim along that. Trim along this edge up here and have just enough. You've got plenty of excess, so you can you can tuck it first and then cut off any excess you may have. Once you roll these edges, if you want to go back and trim along that along that uh, the seam on, on the back side, you can. Um, you don't have to, but you can if you want that. Want just like a little bit, a little bit cleaner. All right, I'm gonna let you finish that front one up before I get back. That.
this is one of those areas that you do want to make sure that you heat. Um, as you can see, it changes direction quite a few times right here, here. It does that about five different direction changes on the same panel. Um, you do for sure want to heat it so that way you can get into the fender. Because when you put those fenders back on, you're not going to see your, your paint there. You're going to see whatever the color of the vinyl is that you chose. So definitely want to make sure that it's consistent all the way through and that you do have it properly applied right there. Right here is another spot where we have a directional change. So we want to heat this, not too much. I do have it on the low setting. So just enough to get it soft. Make sure it's not warm, it's not hot or steaming. It is not good for the vinyl. This in. It may seem like a small piece, but small pieces catch the eye. probably about let's say an eighth of an inch right here uh, to a quarter of an inch that will tuck underneath give it an even more clean look trimming you do just want to stay right in between the crease right here you don't want to try and be fancy and trim outside of it or anything like that you could risk damaging the paint so I'm gonna just get right in between there you don't have to push the blade all the way through just right to where it's cradled you know that you're gonna get a straight clean cut have a sharp blade when you do it. That may sound scary, but it makes it easier. There you go. I have it separated. Go in. Yeah, you know, when you did this, well, we haven't done the rear door with the split fender on it. So this is going to tuck up under the door. I'm curious if that fender is going to show any paint under there if we need to leave this extra there for that for that fender I think so um, I think the fender show about a little less than an eighth inch of paint okay so we're gonna do it just just to be safe so this fender does separate from this or this door does separate from that fender again we didn't have this on the two door so that wasn't an issue 
But since this door does open up, I do want to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and cut that relief uh, about a quarter inch in from this from the edge of that door and then let that orange lay in uh, just for that visual as we, you know, as this, as this lays down, as that fender goes back on. Uh, we'll see when that goes back on if we're going to need that or not, but I'd rather have it than need it than need it and not have it. That's what they say about a spare tire. One of the enjoyable parts of this kit, personally for me, are cutting these out. You don't, really, you don't have to be an artist to get in there. You just follow exactly where it is, and you get a clean cut. And you are going to have to take these out. The uh, circles and rectangles because that is where your fenders will fasten. If you try to push through the vinyl, it could damage the vinyl, could damage your fender, and neither of those no one wants. So, we're gonna take our time. You know, it probably looks like I'm speeding through this. And cut these out because we don't want headaches. Easiest way I've found is to go on the open side of the vinyl. So where there's still a void right here, but this is being covered up by the vinyl. So you want to cut this way, this way, and then go across. There's still two points right there that are holding. So you're not gonna end up dropping the vinyl inside of your fender. You just pull it right off. And the same thing with the circles. Start from the top, go down. The same point that you started with, go over. And after, you want to run your hand over. Yeah, see, I missed one. That's why you run your hand over. So, go back, check again. Make sure that we don't feel any weird dips. There's a dip here. Make sure you don't burn your hand on the heat gun. Oh, definitely not. Ouch. Could hit that one up there. Right. Check in. 
That's all of them. On this seam here, you may have to open the door and kind of get your fingers to pull around from the back. That's always been a hard one to, to get to. And again, when that's warm, that softens that adhesive, makes it a little bit easier. I did pull that back a little bit, Gianna, if you saw that. No, um, right. Just to get that back, get that off that door so we can go ahead and get this door tucked. Make sure you have the room to open your door all the way because you are going to need that space. Good back there, we're good here, we're good down there at the bottom. Looking good. Now I can come back and heat this edge. Again, when you make this cut here, make sure you leave enough just to just to tuck. That piece there in the back was just insurance in case we need to see that with the, you know, in case the fender doesn't cover all that. But this piece is definitely more important than what's going to be behind the fender. Fender flare. This piece here, I'm not freehanding it. Not sure you can see it. I'm butting my knife up against this door, not the fender. Because the fender is what we want to keep as a whole. If you cut too close to your fender, you're going to end up cutting it short. You'll have paint showing. You don't want that. You want to be able to roll it in. So, like I said, cutting against this side of the door, right up against that body line. So that way, when I go to peel this off, there's still extra for me to tuck under there. All right, Jan, I'm gonna let you finish up that front fender, that door. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here on the hood. Um, that hood piece, uh, again, I'm gonna leave that camera where it's at um, and kind of show you. I think it's just more awkward to get to it than anything else. But just like our other hood kits, um, the white area of this piece is actually the hood bump. This orange is going to lay on that on the down slope of that hood bump. So what we're going to do is really come just inside. You know, if you want to make a little mark just inside here, and the same thing on this side, coming just inside to that pinstripe, make a little mark. And that's going to be what you want to line up with the top of the hood bump, where it, where it crests at the top. And you want to, again, use that tape and kind of go back and forth, but that's, good, that's your lineup. The top of that hood top of that graphic is, is, is cut to match the, the shape of the, of the, the top of that hood um, or the back of the hood for that bump. Big key, don't rush your edges, because it is possible to get them to buckle. So you want to be good and, and patient when you're laying the edges down, because you don't want to have to pull those back up. Um, 
having the stool is great for um, Broncos, really any truck for that matter. Um, and I hit, I did, I hit this right on. I'm going to come a little bit back. And then we're going to hinge center, top and bottom on that. I'm going to do that from the other side. What's that you say? You, you can never have too much tape? Never have too much tape. I ran out of tape on this side. Look how that works out. <laughs> Definitely make sure you have enough tape. You remember at the beginning of the video, we pretty much had tape going all the way down. Now we're starting to run low. Tape is important. You want to make sure you have everything where you need it to be before you start applying. Jen, I'm going to go ahead and grab that camera just to show them what this hood looks like. Right. Just like our other hood graphics. This one's going to come over that edge and it's going to come down. But that mark I made back here is right there at that, at that, at that crease. I did the same thing on the other side and then hinged. Once there in the middle, once up there on top. And again, you can see that same mark there. And that's got me centered right there on that hood. I'm going to hinge one side, flip it over, come back, work from center out to get this stripe down. Side of this done. Alright, so for this portion of the door, you do want to make sure you have space on this side and space on this side. It doesn't have to be the same amount of space, but you do need to make sure that there is enough to roll into there. If you don't, again, it will show who knows what might potentially creep under there. Actually, helps things to, to not creep under there, say water or anything, if those edges are, are rolled. Um, also, if uh, few and far between, some may get out of their vehicle and rub against the door, or they may get into the car, rub against the door or something like that. So if you roll those edges, you'll know, have that peace of mind to, uh, to not potentially damage your graphic just from getting in and out of the car. So we're lining up this black pinstripe to black pinstripe. And if you look, I go not on this rocker panel. This is specifically for the door. The rocker panel piece is right here. It's separate.
center out on that. I'm not concerned about that paper in the middle. We're just doing the outside edge of this. I just want to grab the top. I kind of tack that the pinstripe, and then we'll take the mask off and work that vinyl down separate. Without that mask, that vinyl is going to be softer. Again, that pre-mask or that paper mask is going to let that vinyl stay rigid. If it makes that easier to get in place, but just like we're doing this kit without any mask, that vinyl is soft. Some people like it; it's easier to work with, but it's definitely easier with the with with the mask on it. definitely best to work one surface at a time so if you're working say on a flat surface or how we did the fenders here you want to go up to that body line all the way around and then to the next line all the way around so that way you have consistency if you try to go ahead and say squeegee all of this in at one time all the way through it can potentially shift the rest of the vinyl. So, to make life easier for yourself and your install easier, go ahead and get that tack down first. Similar to how, similar to how Greg's hood was. So, like I was saying, I started here first. I stopped right there went all the way across the door, and then I did the remaining of the body line. Pro tip, if you don't want to get your hamstrings below the hood, use the trail sights. Put your weight on. Personally, one of my favorite things to do is to use the trail sights to put my weight on. <laughs> get a little freaky, but it's not that bad, I promise. Right, so pull up the edge right here on the door. Same thing in the back. We're not going to pull the whole thing off. Just going to get it to where it's not stuck on to a different panel. We want just the door. We're going to isolate just that. So we're going to pull this back, hold it while this is still floating back here. You're going to open your door. Looks sketchy, but trust me, we'll be fine. Now, if you notice, the door does pull away from the fender. So you don't have to worry about once you get your door open, that's going to start pulling up the rest of it. Go ahead and open that up. Now you can start. Touching 
this, rolling it over. And then for these corners, don't cut with the corner. You kind of have to, whatever direction that it's pointing, get your knife and just make a slit that direction. So this point is going this way. That's exactly where your knife is going to go. It's called a relief cut. And if you don't do it, then your door won't roll the right way. And good could look not that great. And it's a bit more difficult to, to try and get heat curve this over. This is the easier way. You don't have to fight it. Straight to the point. Like I said, don't rush your roll. Get it nice. And start rolling. Do you have your front fender fully complete? It is. All right, I'm gonna put that fender back on. Remember, we haven't post heated this, but we're just doing this as a demo purpose. Once we finish this video and take photos, we're taking this kit right off and we'll go on to our next kits. I think we're working on some rockers coming up here real soon. I know we've been saying that for the last few months, but we keep getting sidetracked with custom stuff like this. If you want, you can heat this and roll it over. I'll show you the easier way if you don't want to go that route. And you'll get the same result. You can make a cut right there, just like I did. All I did was follow this body line. I didn't cut against the paint. Left a little bit of extra. You want to slide up against the body line right there. Okay. Brush your roll. Let me break you out here, hold on. Front is a little sketchy because you do have your your fender that you had laid right here, so definitely be careful with that. And then just go ahead and roll that over. And use your pinky, your index finger to open the door up a little bit more so you can get more room. Just take your time. And if you did it right, you shouldn't have any drama on the inside of your door. And it should lay right in.
me go ahead and pull that camera back here to show you that rear area. For this last little bit before Greg steals you guys, I am going to lay the back first and then the front. That way if there's a little bit of overlap then you, know, you don't have anything weird going on or Again, our, the kit that goes out to you, without that will be one piece. So we're going to show you that rear, that rear section. I guess some cables getting tied up here. Ah, that's going to come out of the wall. get a section right there we talked about that back piece obviously we got the spare tire off watch your head on the camera <laughs> and again I marked a piece of tape where have had we done the passenger side that's going to finish off but you're following that 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 crease again I marked that with tape all I need to do is get to here, and then we're gonna do this right after. And this is gonna finish. That's why I marked the other side. It's just, you know, finish up right here, like, like just like that. But before we do that, you may wanna get a little, you have the heat gun? Yes. This is one of those tricky spots. One of the many of this kit. If you haven't seen by now, again, this is not the do-it-yourself kit. It can be, but it does take patience. Now, while I've tacked this, I got my mark here. I know where I want to finish there. I can even do just one more. So I know where I want to finish. Right there. Now I'm going to pull this back up. warm that so low setting I'm going to follow that line it's going to look like it's going off but we know it's not because we've made our mark Want to tack that top so we can kind of pull down from the bottom. And again, if we need to pull up a little bit, we can. Just want to use your patience. Work that down. If you get a wrinkle, we can pull that back up, get a little bit more heat. This 
sure I'm feeling the effects of that 40C instead of the 180. all that extra got plenty here to trim. You don't need to trim all of it, but we can. You've got about a, a quarter inch to half inch fold underneath that fender. So I'm going to trim off just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look very pretty, but you're not going to see it. On the right side of the tailgate, you'll notice that the pinstripe dips right into where the hinge is. It's just the way that Ford made that seam, not a big deal. I know I'm gonna hit my head on this camera. I know it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. So there's really nowhere to hinge that on the bottom. So you really just have to be careful with this. You've got your line up stripe is the lineup so we can actually use that piece of tape so you've got plenty of room to tuck this under that tailgate really have a little bit too much really but I don't know if you guys can see it but one of our fasteners stayed inside the fender it will possibly happen to you too all you have to do is get some needle nose go on the back side of it And that's what they look like. Very easy to put back into the fender. Or flare. So there's this one right here. Just want that side. Go in. Ow. It is directional. Pop it back in, you're good to go. And once that's back on, be sure, be sure. Not to forget, all those clips go forward again. That way your finger's locked in. 
That's not gonna happen. It's not gonna fall off. Double check yourself. Those ones are all going forward. Give it a shake. Are we done? We are done. Put the tire on. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's take it to the beach. Let's go. All right, so let's tidy up. We'll kind of walk through this again. Make sure we get everything right. Trim that gas lid. Don't read the gas lid. Or you will be at the pump wondering. Okay, this is that kit. You do want to go back and post heat. 180 degrees. Heat gun only. Do not torch that material. All right, guys. That was just about an hour and a half. We'll go ahead and get this spare tire back on and get some pictures. So as you can tell, there is a lot to this kit. Um, Yuen and I, uh, this is I think the third or fourth kit we've done today. Um, but two people that have been doing this for a long, long time, took about an hour and a half, one side, hood, rear piece, we still got to do a passenger side if you to do that. Cut that time in half to one installer, you're going to be looking at about near four hours. Um, again, it doesn't include that prep, um, getting, making sure the body's clean. Uh, another note, again, we don't want to put this over ceramic coating. Uh, you want a ceramic coat after you have your graphics installed. Um, you know, guys, this, this orange on this cactus, I know it's different. Um, you know, we, we wanted to try something new. Um, I think for more of that retro look, this would have been fine just with that light green or even a white. Um, and then you can use that accent color to do whatever you want to do with that. Um, but like I said, um, we're always looking to do something new, something different. And, uh, you know, while this kit had been done, um, you know, inspiration comes from all over. So happy to make this as a kit um, that you can do yourself or have someone do it. Uh, it is customizable um, as far as colors and uh, you know if need be it can be die cut it's going to be a little trickier to do that really not wouldn't recommend that unless you want to do a one-off um, and have someone do that with the, the cut tape but um, you know again thanks guys for watching I know that was a long video hopefully you got what you wanted out of it maybe scrub through there a little bit get through some of the boring parts um, if there's anything we forgot um, I'm sure there is. You always go back and think, oh, we didn't talk about this or we didn't talk about that. Give us a call. Um, leave a comment. We, we will get that notification. We're always here during the week, Monday through Friday. Like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. I know that when we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're going to give away a $250 gift certificate towards any of our kits. So that could be you or one of your friends. Thanks again. And like I said, we're going to get some photos. Check that out on the site. And uh, we'll see you next time.